Hello everyone, uh, let us start with uh, another lecture in which we are going to consider how do we compute. So computation, computation of matrices phi and gamma which are ultimately responsible for our discrete system representation. So we know discrete system system is given by the phi matrix gamma matrix C of D and D of D. That's what we found out in the last lecture. So how do we compute uh, phi and gamma? Uh, there are two ways. Uh, one is approximate way. So approximate way. And second one is exact. So if we consider approximate way, we want first to recall how does it look for the scalar case, discrete system representation, when we have a scalar differential equation. So this is something what we demonstrated in the previous lectures. Into the AFS. Now we have a D of S. B scalar B. And here we said So this equation came as a discrete version of the following scalar ordinary differential equation where we assume that this input signal can be Consider as a constant between the sampling instances such that the sampling time t here given in this expression relates these two equations as this being discrete representation of the low run ordinary differential equation. And we found out that phi in this case is given is e to the a of t and gamma in the case of a simple scalar equation can be exactly calculated as e to the a of t minus 1 and multiplies this b. Okay. So this is when we have a scalar. But in the case when we have, instead of the scalar, we have that x is a vector of the states, we will have e to the a of t x of k plus 0 to again t e to the a of s d of s and b u of k. So this is the representation where now a is a matrix and b is a matrix. And what do we do in that case? 
In that case, we have to recall the simple expression, and probably the most important expression uh, in um, analysis, is that function e to the x can be expressed as infinite series. This is the expression that is heavily utilized and it's very important expression in the mathematical analysis. And we have that this series is given as a series of x at i goes i goes from zero to infinity divided by factorial i. In other words, we obtain one plus x plus x square factorial 2, which is 2, plus x3, factorial 3, which is 6, and so on. In the same way, for the case when instead of x we have a matrix that multiplies the scalar value t, we will have the similar expression. So it's a sum that goes from i goes to from 0 to infinity, a of t factorial a of t power i and uh, again uh, factorial i. In other words, we have that this entire expression a of t on power zero zero factorial which we become identity a of t one factorial plus a of t square two factorial and plus and so so to infinity. In other words matrix exponential it's a matrix. How do we see that? Because this term here on the power zero is just identity. So it's a matrix. This is the matrix that has to be same dimensions like a matrix exponential. Plus a matrix multiplies the coefficient t plus a square t square divided by 2 plus and so on. In this way, we see that we can approximate phi given as a matrix exponential with first two terms. So we just can take that this is phi and this is approximate expression for phi. What about gamma? Gamma is a given as zero to t e to the a s now t s b and if we substitute this expression for the matrix exponential this serious expression into the equation instead of EAS we will have identity plus A of S because this is EAS so EAT instead of T we will write just S plus a s square by 2 plus and so on d s b okay now we see that this is infinite series and this integral now operates on each term of this series therefore we are writing Let's write this expression for each 
term. So the first term is going to be 0 to t identity matrix dsb 0 t a s d s b plus and so on. And again, if we neglect all of these terms, we just keep the first term, gamma is going to become just T B. Because we see that identity multiplies B is B. This is the matrix. Multiplies B matrix, input matrix, which in single input case is just a column vector. And T you just integrate from scalar integration from zero from zero to t. So we just have a that gamma is tb. In other words, for the approximate expressions, we are getting i plus a of t and gamma is t multiplies b, where t is our discretization time or sampling time. So those are approximate expressions. Now we see that we have lost a lot of terms in this approximate way of expressing the phi and gamma and this might impact accuracy of discrete model. Let us therefore look for the exact. So second exact equations of phi and gamma. And in order to do exact calculations of phi and gamma, let us consider the following, that there is a function psi that is given as a zero time e to the a of s v of s. This is just the integral expression that we have it here without b. And if we integrate this expression, we will obtain i t plus a t square by 2 plus a where t cubed by 3 plus and so on. You just, if we take this expression and we plug it here and integrate, we will, this is what we obtain. Now, this psi function can be multiplied by a matrix from left. Okay, so I'm writing a psi and each term now here to the left side is going to be multiplied. Uh, t plus a t squared by 2 plus a squared t cubed by 3 plus and so on. This is infinite series on the right side. And now if we observe that 
this becomes that axi equal a of t because a multiplies identity is a plus a t square by 2 plus a t cube by 3 plus and so on. We see that this expression almost becomes as a matrix exponential. In other words, if we add now i to the left side and i to the right side of the equation, we obtain that the expression on the right side equation is nothing but e to the a of t or phi. In other words, we obtain easily a relationship between a psi, between a phi, and A, in exact form. And that is providing that we know what is Xi. So we claim that we know the solution of Xi. What about Gamma? Gamma is, is as it can be deduced here in this term. It's just going to be Xi multiplies B. Okay, therefore, let us calculate example of this. So sometimes the structure of the matrix, example, let's say that A is 0, 1, 0, 0. And that B matrix is given as 0, 1. So what do we have in this case? We can easily calculate immediately matrix exponential from this expression. Or we can calculate Xi from this expression. In other words, for the this special structure of the matrix phi is going to be identity since it's 2 by 2 we are writing 1 0 0 1 plus 0 1 0 0 multiply scalar t plus zero one zero one oh sorry zero square but I will write S with this zero one So, in this case, we have that this mat these two matrices are going to be zero matrix. So we see that all other terms are going to die out. In other words, for this expression, we see that only first term and second term will survive. So, only these two terms will survive, and phi becomes 1, t, 0, 1. As you can see, this is a special case of the matrix. And the special case 
of the matrix A induces that we can exactly calculate phi, but taking into account these series approximation. If these higher order terms, in this series approximation, all of these higher order terms here, if they don't die out, if they're not zero, completely zero, then we cannot say that we obtain exact approximation. So we use this method when we are sure that all other terms are zero. What about gamma? Gamma, again, we say zero to E, E to the A of S, D of S, B, A of S is equal phi exactly, but instead of T, we will have a S, of course, and 0 to t, 1 by s, 0, 1, d, s, b, becomes 0 to t, we can bring this b matrix inside, 1 by s, 0, 1, 0, 1, D of S, and calculate now 0 to T, this is S, D 0 multiplies this column, D 0 multiplies this column, S by 1, DFS, such that exact expression leads to the T squared by 2, and here it's T. Integral operates on each entry of the matrix, so integral from 0 to T S DS is uh, S squared by 2 from T to 0, which yields this expression expression this term, and integral from 0 to t, ts is just t. So this is an example that we have when we calculate the exact expression. Now let me introduce another expression for exact calculation of the phi. So the phi is equal as a Laplace inverse transform of S I identity minus A inverse. In other words, this is also exact expression. And how we obtain that? Let us consider that we have a x dot a of x system. And we have a initial condition. Okay. So taking Laplace transform of this, we obtain Laplace x dot Laplace transform operates on the ax a is a matrix with a constant coefficient and it's treated as a constant that can be factored out out of the Laplace transform which yields x s here is s minus x0 a of x of s. If we shift this expression to the left side, this to the right, 
we obtain S I minus A X of S X of zero and multiplying this expression with the S I minus A inverse on the left side multiply this becomes x of s s i minus a inverse x is zero. Now inverse Laplace transform yields x of t equal inverse Laplace operates on the expression s i minus a minus 1 this is just a constant such that we obtain that this entire expression is a e to the a of t. This tells us that if t is equal discretization time, we have that e to the a of t exactly is going to become inverse Laplace transform of s I minus one and this is exact expression. So once we get e to the a of t, which is five we repeat the identical procedure because this expression goes into the gamma and we again obtain the gamma, exact gamma from the phi or e to the a of t that is given in this form. Therefore, we demonstrate in this lecture two ways. First, we show approximate ways when we truncate the serious expressions and finally we demonstrate in the cases when we can obtain the serious expressions exactly due to the particular structure of the matrices A and B we can calculate phi exactly and therefore utilize to calculate gamma and in the same way we have exact expression that introduces and uses inverse Laplace transform. This is important uh, in the further, further studies of our uh, discrete system representation to know exactly how to calculate the discrete system uh, representation and in particular matrices phi and gamma.